I want to give the audience a chance to uh, ask some questions or make some comments, if they have any. Yeah, I just um, have a question for either one of you specifically relating to our subject. He has a nicely normal total testosterone, but a significantly low free testosterone. If you put him on replacement, you replace the endogenous testosterone with exogenous testosterone, but he still has this very high level of SHBG. Aren't you right back where you started? I think we both agree that that's why a free testosterone in this gentleman needs to be the item that should be followed. Because you're right, the total um, is, is misleading because of that elevated SHBG concentration. So the purpose of, of treatment is to bring up that free level. I completely concur that folks who have higher SHBG levels, their total testosterone is not reliable. So for the diagnosis as well as monitoring, it's only free T that becomes your gold standard for evaluation of that patient. Historically, a lot of uh, patients were in their 30s and 40s were treated with testosterone and still are. They've been on it continually for, for a decade or more. Um, what do you suggest we do with these patients as they get older? If by your more stricter uh, criteria, they don't necessarily qualify, but it could affect their quality of life. So if they have been diagnosed in their 20s and 30s for classical androgen deficiency, that is because of testicular disease or pituitary disease or hypothalamic disease, those are the patients who need testosterone replacement lifelong. So if that's the diagnosis, then I think those are the men that should be continued on testosterone replacement. If there is no such diagnosis, and if you feel that those patients were started based on non-specific symptoms and they do not have true disease of the HPG axis, then one could always think about giving them a drug holiday and see whether their testosterone levels return to normal or not. Now, this is a difficult process because when you stop exogenous testosterone, their endogenous axis is suppressed and it takes time to recover. What some of us do in our clinic is give these patients short courses of Clomid, uh, which is clomiphene citrate, uh, which is used also uh, 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 in some obese men who have uh, central hypogonadism because of, as a matter of their obesity. And that might hasten the recovery of their axis and might shorten the duration of their symptoms, which they encounter while their endogenous axis is suppressed and you have taken them off exogenous. But if the diagnosis so early was made because of organic hypogonadism, those are the men who deserve testosterone treatment and one should not discontinue testosterone treatment in those individuals. It also shows how important it is to get that FSH and LH in the beginning before treatment is started. Because if, you, if it started and then you see that the FSH and LH are low, it, it may be because of therapy and not because of the pituitary tumor. The other thing I'll, I'll note about the case is that um, only about half of the men who have that low of a free testosterone will have elevated gonadotropins who are HIV infected. So the, things get a little bit murkier and probably murkier for you all to decide whether or not to treat if his uh, gonadotropins had be, been normal or low. No, I completely agree, and uh, indeed, majority of the folks uh, uh, with HIV who do have androgen deficiency or have low total T or free T, their LH and FSH levels are inappropriately normal. So this was an easy case for us to make the call because uh, both the gonadotropins were so clearly elevated. Um, I agree with Todd that if, if uh, this man's gonadotropins were normal and his free T level was at the borderline, I would be uh, very perplexed to give him the diagnosis of androgen deficiency or not, because uh, the only thing which will go in his favor and I would give a trial would be symptom of decreased libido, which is the most specific symptom of testosterone deficiency. ED, fatigue, they are not specific symptoms, just like Dr. Dobbs had highlighted based on endocrine society guidelines. So this was an easy case just because his gonadotropins were elevated, which signifies testicular disease. Other questions? Scott? Do you know much about um, the effects of uh, various medications, including particularly psychiatric medications on uh, erectile dysfunction, but whether it's mediated, whether they differ in their effects on 
testosterone and uh, gonadotropins or not, or whether it's uh, by completely different mechanisms? Well, I, I would say a few things. So glucocorticoids will suppress, opiates will suppress, and it's true physiological, probably at the hypothalamic level. SSRIs um, are usually considered to have more of a neurological effect with decreased orgasmic function or anorgasmia altogether, uh, or, de uh, or delayed uh, orgasm. Um, so, and there's lots of debates about depression and whether it actually changes the testosterone level, and I think that's sort of unclear. I'd say that. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I think a uh, uh, majority of those dysfunctions are uh, more ejaculatory dysfunctions that SSRIs cause, like Adrian mentioned. Uh, the only other thing I would add is some psych medications do result in hyperprolactinemia. So if prolactin levels go up, they do shut down their your gonadal axis. So that is something that one can watch for. So uh, would you maybe, uh, you know, I, mean, I know it's very patient-specific, might you measure prolactin and if it is elevated yes. then yes. to uh, change medication? change, stop, but sometimes you can't change or stop, mm -hmm. and oftentimes then people would add testosterone in that situation. So this patient is 60 years old, so for how long you will treat him with testosterone? Well, um, often, t you know, I, the thing I think we're trying to emphasize here is that often, you know, testosterone, you could, it's not life-threatening not to have it. So if there's absolutely no improvement in his symptoms, then you could make the decision to stop it. The only caveat here is his bone density. Um, and I, in general, I'm, I, um, this could be continued for life because of the bone density issue. And that's oftentimes what we say to men when they say they don't improve with uh, sexual function. We say, well, we're not treating you for that. We're treating you for the bone density. You know, Shez was making a point about we could use bisphosphonates, but bisphosphonates are not perfect at all. And they have their own set of side effects. And in a 60-year-old man that maybe could live for another 20 years, one wouldn't want to give bisphosphonates for 20 years to that gentleman. So in many ways, it's more physiological to give testosterone. If you, if you believe the heart is a, a problem. You know, we were trying to convince you that, I was trying to convince you that the cardiovascular risk is really very minimal. And you could follow it uh, very, you could follow it, certainly the, the fluid retention very easily. I think for, for me, um, I will actually treat this man uh, only to see whether in the next three months or so his libido improves or not. I think if his libido improves, I think that would be my, uh, uh, my basis to continue testosterone. If his, um, if his libido was not the issue, I think for his uh, bone, I might still uh, High-risk folks, uh, I might still go for bisphosphonate, only reason being that there are no fracture data for testosterone. Uh, the, the other uh, clinical management thing is um, when you're following these people, you want to uh, be sure that their testosterone levels do get up into the, usually I use the, the free, mid-free testosterone range. There's a percentage of people, probably about 10, 15 percent of people use transdermal testosterone and have very poor absorption. And so if you're, if you're uh, before you make the decision, yes, this person is on testosterone, no, they're not having a clinical benefit, you need to be retesting their testosterone to be sure you're in the therapeutic range. Other issues? Great. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh,